Hello, everybody. Welcome to, uh, to today's uh, webinar. We are here to talk about uh, the development of the National um, Community Leadership Council for the community-based senior serving sector. I'm Winona Giannazzi with the Howe Group. And here today to join the conversation, we have three wonderful leaders in the area. We have Karen McDonald with Healthy Aging Alberta. She is also one of the co-chairs of the Interim Leadership Council. Hi, welcome, Karen. We have Marta Hayek, another one of our co-chairs for the Interim Council. Um, and Marta is with the Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario. We also have Gregor Sneden with Help Age Canada, and Help Age has the pleasure of being the backbone organization for this amazing work. Thank you all for joining us. Um, the first question that I have today, um, Karen, I'm going to start with you. Could you please tell us what is a community-based seniors serving sector? And can you share some examples with us, please? Thanks, Winona. Um, the community-based senior services sector is typically comprised of nonprofit organizations and charitable organizations that leverage volunteers and paid staff to deliver services that support older adults to age well in their communities and homes of choice. It also may include services that are provided directly by municipalities or housing providers and sometimes even healthcare organizations. And those, are, those services sometimes include things like home support, so things like homemaking, uh, services like out here in the West, snow removal is a big one, uh, supports around social isolation and connectedness, uh, supports that help with things like supported navigation, uh, organizations like MARTA's that support su things like elder abuse prevention. Uh, it's a broad range of those community-based supports that really do help people's overall health and well-being in community settings, leveraging that network of volunteers and community-based supports. Excellent. Thanks so much, Karen. That provides some fantastic context. Um, another question for you is, um, what really is the purpose of this work? And we all talk about the importance of community, but can you tell us why community hmm. is so important, please? I think community organizations are uniquely positioned to really understand the needs and strength of their communities and the individuals within their communities and to leverage volunteers and philanthropy to be agile and responsive to the needs of the individuals in their communities, uh, to be very efficient, and sometimes we refer to them as being very cost effective, uh, to be governed by members of their communities and to be accountable to their community members. Um, to really understand the health and well-being of the individuals that they serve. Um, we also understand that the well-being of older adults, sometimes we think of it as sort of this trifecta of three sectors that can really impact the, the well-being of older adults. We have our health sector, our housing sector, and the community-based senior serving sector. And those, those three systems are working together to have shared outcomes that can impact the well-being of older adults. So we understand that the unique value of the community-based senior serving sector, or the CBSS sector as we like to call it, we like a good acronym, uh, is really uh, felt and understood locally and at times provincially, but we know that we don't yet have necessarily that same understanding or impact at the national level. So that's really why we're here today, is to talk about the potential for that national impact and a conversation about beginning to leverage that same value proposition at the national level. Amazing. Thanks, Karen. Um, so who ultimately benefits from this, from wonderful, this wonderful work? work when when all the Thanks for the question, Winona. So Community-based seniors programs and services, many of these are supported by volunteers to make sure that these programs can continue to meet the needs of community. These organizations are the backbone of support for older persons living in the community, and that incidentally represents 93% of older adults in Canada. Currently, those of us who are working in the sector all know all too well that we are all navigating a very fragmented system being quite creative in creating those vital community linkages. The beneficiaries of a coordinated cohesive sector would not only benefit our various organizations to be more effective, but more importantly, allow us to have a long-term, very positive impact on the social determinants of health that affect this fastest growing demographic. Thanks, Marta. Yeah, thanks, Marta. And creativity is key, and creativity is key. Something we always see in this sector. Um, Gregor, a uh, question for you now: Has this work been done before? Um, where and why are we looking at doing this on a national? 
Thanks, Winona. Well, <clears throat> you know, just drawing a little bit on on our experience at, at Help Age Canada, which which works uh, nationally, um, and you know, we in COVID nineteen we were able to respond. We were able to fundraise, and really, we're reaching out to support community organizations. That's part of our mandate is is community driven uh, collaborations, and so we were raising these funds, but you know, we just we're having such a hard time finding organizations to support and give it to. And we were literally, you know, Googling a province and looking for uh, organizations that were supporting older people. And uh, gosh, it was really hard to find organizations. In fact, sometimes they were really suspicious of us. You know, who are you guys and why do you want to give us uh, some money? You know, Except for British Columbia. British Columbia, one phone call, we had every single community-based senior serving organization in the province, their size, their funding sources, their contact information, what they were doing in COVID, what their needs were. And, you know, we could have purely just been a funder for British Columbia because it was just so easy. Um, because they had developed, they had started back before the, before the pandemic in really developing a network and developing a sector within their province. And now Alberta has fallen closely behind. They now have a funded and coordinated sector in their province through a lot of that work, starting from community, listening and creating that, that opportunity, that platform uh, for the voice of community-based uh, programs and organizations to participate in leading that work in developing a sector within their, their province, which has been so exciting. So Canada has, is home to close to 9,000 of these community-based seniors serving organizations. So this work has been done there in, in of course, uh, BC and Alberta, and, uh, and, and we're now looking to help amplify and, and develop that work in, in Canada. Thank you so much, Gregor. Karen, when we were talking earlier, you had some examples of where we've seen this type of work done before. Could you um, shed a little light on that for us, please? Yeah, thanks, Winona. We see examples with other populations where community-based services have been able to organize nationally to have a real impact in terms of national policy and the impact on investment in community-based services at a local level. So a great example is the early learning and child care sector. Uh, I think we're all familiar with the $10 a day child care policy that has been rolled out. That took many, many years of work of community-based organizations right across the country, professionals in that sector, grassroots organizations organizing themselves uh, to articulate the value of the work that they were doing uh, with the kids in their communities and families in their communities uh, to organize themselves to be able to advocate nationally for investment in that work. And not just to advocate, to organize themselves as a sector to be able to share best practice, to be able to work towards a national workforce strategy, to be able to work with academic institutions to develop standards around the development of their workforce. Um, that's a great exemplar, I think, for the community-based senior services sector around what's possible at a national level for the coordination and development of a, com of a community-based sector. And so I think as we begin our journey as a sector, sometimes it can be a bit daunting and a bit overwhelming to imagine this work when you know we're, we're trying to do our work every day uh, at a local level uh, and making the time for this, but to see the impact that's had at a local level, uh, to see that national coordination, um, and to see that it's possible. And it was really led by professionals locally doing that work nationally. And so I'm really inspired by what they've been able to achieve. And I wanted to mention that to our colleagues in the CBSS sector as what's possible uh, for professionals in the community organizing themselves at a national level. And so we can see that that journey that they've been able to uh, take. And I think what, what we can also aspire to in the CBSS sector. Great. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Marta, I think that I know when we were speaking earlier, you had some, some additional comments, I think, that would really help to talk about the importance of that coordination. coordination, 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 coordination. Right. That aspect sometimes to be 
Thank you, Winona. So one of the things that we look at is the elimination of redundancies or the duplication of services. We are operating in a very important space. So the, the more lean we can be and demonstrate that skill, the, the better to our funders. Um, our key partners are essentially wide ranging. There are any organizations who engage with older adults. So whether a local library, a social club, or any other community pillars, they are agencies that uniquely are positioned and understand the complexity of issues older adults face, and they cover a wide range of categories. So nutritional supports, health and wellness, educational, cultural, each has their area of expertise. When things get really dicey and difficult and are challenging for people to navigate, we get into the information and referral services that essentially assist older populations navigate those inequitable accesses to or availability of services, particularly in rural environments. So the more we can work collaboratively, but with a, a strong direction going forward, the better. Thanks, Marta. Um, thanks, Marta. That leads me to um, another. That leads so, Gregor, this one is for you. Can you please tell us what is Help Age Canada's role as the backbone for this incredibly important? Yeah, thanks. I, I just would add that, you know, I as I was listening to Karen and, and Marta speak to like, you know, just the just to let my imagination just goes when I think about a, a large coordinated sector, and when you know we had the example of childcare uh, um, that that Karen mentioned, and you know the significant impact investment that went into that when it became a national coordinated body. That's such an exciting opportunity, and you know leveraging our collective impact in coordination with uh, healthcare and housing and other sectors. I think there's just so much possibility, and it just seems like the natural, uh, w the, the natural step we need to take as a country. For for Health Age Canada, you know, our our work here really is is really in being uh, 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 supportive in this work. We, you know, we're 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 working here to support this interim council because it's really a a leadership council for community. It's not, you know, our council, or it's really to create the opportunity for count for community to step forward and to, to, to validate: is this the right thing to do? What's the voice? What are the, um, you know, what are the priorities? Where are we going from here? And and let it be your, let it be the voice of community. It's not our voice. So, Help Age Canada really our work is really to be supportive, to help convene, um, you know, at, at least for this interim period um, and, and move this work forward. And if there is the, the call for a, a backbone uh, function or role, we can certainly support in that way. But really, it's it's really at this stage is to provide the, the, the support, the, the mechanism, the medium, and to support the work of this leadership council um, going forward. Thanks, Gregor. Yeah, that convening role is is so critical to providing that foundation and um, really ensuring that that community voice is, is heard throughout. Thank you so much. Um, so the question is, why now? Why is this the right time? Karen. Thanks, Hanona. I think we all know that the, the demographics are shifting uh, and that Canada is aging. And so we need to respond now. In addition, our public policy provincially and nationally is shifting towards caring community. Uh, in addition, older adults want to stay in their homes and in their communities. And so community-based organizations are a critical part of that equation. And they need the, the resources and the support and the coordination to respond to those changes. Um, we need to have a, a plan frankly, just as we would in our healthcare system and in our housing sector, uh, to respond to those shifts so that community-based organizations can have the resources and the workforce required to provide the supports and the services uh, that older adults desire um, and a need in order to stay well and uh, active in their homes and communities of choice. Um, in addition, community-based organizations are facing unprecedented challenges uh, as 
organizations in terms of their sustainability uh, post-pandemic, um, in terms of the rate of volunteerism, uh, funding for those organizations. And so it is a critical time in our sector to come together to support those organizations um, relative to their overall uh, sustainability. So we know we want to connect with one another to share information and resources and move towards a place where we can, as a sector, sustain the important work that these organizations do. Super, thanks, Karen. Um, so as we know, Canada is large and diverse. Um, Gregor, this question is for you. Um, what are we hoping will be achieved in the first three years? Thanks, Winona. You know, again, <clears throat> this is the work of community um, and our, you know, really our first step is we're creating this um, interim community leadership council, which that's what it is. It's an interim uh, national community council with representation from uh, every province and territory from community. It's a platform for, for local community leadership. Uh, Think locally, act nationally. So we're 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 our our first and main step right now is to try to uh, convene and and create that 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 support that the creation of that council, and then we anticipate that that what will follow will will be the voice of that membership, that leadership from the community level across Canada, and we would look at. You know, developing some strategy and, and work plan over the next few years, we would develop some awareness and and, and communi communicate that awareness of the role and function of community um, for older people in Canada. Um, we're hosting the first ever national summit this summer here in Ottawa uh, from June 2nd to 4th. And you can uh, learn about that on the Core Canada website and you can register to attend. We hope you all do, as well as the Help Age Canada website. That's June 2nd to 4th here in Ottawa. It's the first inaugural uh, uh, or summit of the community-based senior services sector. We, we will be conducting we would anticipate conducting regional consultations across Canada to listen to the voice of community, to work with our community partners. Um, we'll be um, uh, uh, hopefully publishing those consultation findings. We're actually doing some work with the National Institute on Aging to develop a research paper on the work of community-based uh, senior serving sectors in Canada. Um, what we would work together to develop some uh, uh, and implement some capacity building strategies and initiatives across Canada, develop some communities of practice with our co colleagues across Canada. We'll, we'll be hosting another uh, summit uh, two years from now and really hope to develop uh, with the voice of community, what are the priorities identified by community What's the path forward to um, really bring those forward uh, at the national level and uh, work with our national stakeholders and our partners in government and elsewhere to really bring that voice of community uh, forward for the establishment of, of a sector? Super. Thank you so much, Gregor. Um, so again, that, uh, that community word really, really comes through strong. Um, as we look to closing off our time together, I would love to hear from our co-chairs. Uh, Marta, starting with you, what are your hopes from this initiative, please? I think by stepping up now and convening these like-minded organizations, we can share best practices, we can put a plan in place, but more importantly, hear from our partners across the country in terms of what are the issues that they're dealing with and how can we work more closely together to, to provide a better positive uh, out, outcome for older adults in Canada. If we draw on that expertise now for all those that are already in, immersed in the sector, we will allow um, government across all jurisdictions to make more informed decisions and allocate resources appropriately. Wonderful, thank you. And thank you. Wonderful, thank you, the co chair. What are your hopes, please? Yeah, building on my colleague Marta's hopes and dreams similarly. Um, I hope that 
my colleagues across the country will see the benefit of this work and they'll get involved. I, I hope that um, our colleagues nationally in government will see the value of the community-based senior services sector in their policy work, and that we'll have the opportunity to work in a co-creation approach that will inform good public policy. Uh, good public policy engages civil society in, in the development of good public policy. And uh, having an, a coordinated national CBSS sector that is more actively involved in that work can only create better outcomes for all older adults. Um, and sustain the good work of CBSS organizations right across the country and the, the work of the staff that work so hard in those organizations and the volunteers that contribute every day in their communities uh, to ensure that older adults are able to contribute their, their amazing gifts and talents in their communities are the largest percentage of volunteers and unpaid, unpaid caregivers in their communities, and we sometimes forget that. Um, as well as meeting their needs so that older adults are able to age in their homes and communities of choice. And so uh, it's good outcomes for everyone if we can if we can make this happen together. So I'm really excited for our next steps uh, with our colleagues right across Canada um, and with our colleagues at HelpAge. So it's an exciting time. So I'm excited to hear from everyone uh, who's excited to get involved in this work and see some people hopefully in Ottawa the first week of June. Um, so those are my hopes and dreams. It's just a low bar. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Yes, lots, lots of work to do as we see these these hopes and dreams come together as we support Canada's older adults. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, Karen and Marta as our co-chairs. Thank co you very much. Thank you and very Gregor. much. And Gregor. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you again. Bye. I thought I would just, I thought add, I would just yeah. add. Okay. Okay. Uh, just I would like to wrap up by inviting uh, everyone to, if you are uh, with a community-based senior serving organization, to to please do uh, consider um, uh, uh, joining our national community leadership council. You can do so. All the terms of reference and the nomination portal is available on the Healthy Aging Core Canada website as well as Health Age Canada's website. So please do consider it. It's all there. It's a, it's a great group of people to work with. Let me tell you, just check out our co-chairs as uh, examples of, uh, of, of leadership. And uh, it's a great bunch. We like to work hard and play hard and, um, and, and get involved in this important work. It's going to be a, a great experience, and we invite you to consider participating in this interim community leadership council. And I'd also really encourage you to please attend our summit. Uh, again, you can also that's also on the Core Canada website as well as Help Age Canada. You can register to attend. We'd love to have you there to uh, start engaging in this really important conversation. So, thank you also Winona from the How Group for being with us. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in June. <laughs>